question. Madam Speaker, on Wednesday, the Rules Committee met and reported a rule, House Resolution 52, providing for consideration of House Joint Resolution 28, the Further Additional Continuing Appropriations Act of 2019, to fund the government until February 28th. The rule provides for consideration of the legislation under a closed rule. The rule provides one hour of debate equally divided and controlled by the chair and ranking member of the Committee on Appropriations. Additionally, the rule provides suspension authority through the legislative day of January 25th, 2019. Madam Speaker, we are in day 27 of this government shutdown, the longest government shutdown in our nation's history. Nearly 800,000 federal employees have now missed a paycheck since the shutdown began. Some estimates say those employees have lost an average of $5,000 each so far. These hardworking Americans are law enforcement officers and National Park Service employees, EPA, FDA, and IRS employees, so many others in dedicated federal service whose families are needlessly suffering. These employees are either furloughed or being forced to work without pay. This is not an acceptable way to govern. I may not have been a member of this body as long as some people here, but I don't think there's a single member Democrat or Republican, who doesn't care about securing our border. But it's foolish to think that keeping our government shut down will in any way help secure the border. You know what Border Patrol and Coast Guard members want more than a wall? They want their paychecks to come on time. Democrats have made it clear we are more than willing to come to the table to talk about sensible border security. But the first step has to be to reopen the government and get our ba government back to functioning. This majority has already voted to open the government seven times with support from across the aisle. But Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has yet to act on any of these bipartisan pieces of legislation. The same legislation, I might add, that has already passed the Senate. There are more than 100 freshman members of this body, comprising over 20% of the House, who've never worked in a functioning federal government due to the Senate's inaction. All of our constituents, both Republican and Democrat, are suffering because of that failure to act. Let me share with you the traumatic impact of the shutdown on my constituents and Americans across the country. Jennifer, the wife of a Coast Guard gunner's mate, wrote to my office to detail the hardships her family is facing. Her husband has served in the Coast Guard for 19 years. They're used to stressful deployments, and her children are proud of their father's service. But now, Jennifer has new hardships to face. How to feed her family on only her income. How she could make the holidays special while not knowing when her husband's next paycheck would come. And how to shield her kids from her constant worry over the absence of that income. This is an embarrassment. Too many federal workers were already living paycheck to paycheck before those paychecks stopped. Having to put a mortgage payment on a credit card deal with an eviction notice, or plead with a bank to delay a student loan payment should not be the reality forced upon hardworking federal employees. The debts these workers incurred during the shutdown will follow them long after the government is reopened. The hits to their savings accounts and marks on their credit scores will serve as painful reminders that they're represented by a government that will put them in harm's way over a policy dispute. Fran, a newlywed with a premature baby who spent more than three weeks in the NICU, has been without an income since her husband's paycheck stopped coming. Their child requires an expensive special formula due to his premature birth, and her husband is now being asked to work overtime without pay. The fear and anguish in these messages from our neighbors is palpable. It should resonate with every member of this body. These stories should keep all of us up at night. If we didn't come to Washington to serve these dedicated and hardworking Americans, then just who are we here to serve? When the government does eventually reopen, fortunately, many of these federal employees will receive back pay. But the plight of federal contractors is worse. The term federal contractors can conjure up an image of highly paid executives or CEOs of private detention facilities, but they're not the real ones harmed by the shutdown. Federal contractors are generally small businesses, cleaners, builders, food service workers, and tech support workers. They're our neighbors who rely on these contracts to make their rent or pay their employees or contribute to our local economies. The callousness with which these federal contractors are being treated 
is repulsive. They and their families deserve so much better. The American people deserve so much better. The longer Senate Republicans keep our government shut down, the worse things will get. The Small Business Administration has already stopped approving loan assistance and guarantee applications from commercial banks and small businesses, programs that are critical to the health of local economies. Security lines at the airports are long, and they will get longer. TSA has already been forced to close security lanes at major airports across the country. This is not because the hardworking men and women of the TSA do not want to keep our skies and our passengers safe but because they've been forced to take second jobs to pay the rent or look after their children at home because they cannot afford ch uh, child care. Without a paycheck, some cannot afford gas or car fare to get to work at all. Just a few days ago, I met with the air traffic controllers from my district. They shared that not only is the shutdown impacting their current workforce, but it's drastically impacting their recruiting efforts to hire and train new employees for this workforce. Can we blame people for being fearful of taking a job that hinges on the federal government's functionality, given what we've seen during this shutdown? A National Air Traffic Controllers Association official warned recently that if the shutdown continues to drag on, there may not be any air traffic controllers left working. Let me pause to make those statements abundantly clear. This shutdown is making us less safe. If it continues much longer, there will not be enough employees on duty to make sure passengers are safe to board a plane, not enough employees left to make sure planes are safe to land, and not enough employees to direct air traffic in our skies. If you think you're insulated from the effects of a government shutdown because you're not a federal employee, you're wrong. What I fear this administration and Republican le leadership in the Senate have forgotten is that this is the people's house. We have an obligation to work for them. Refusing to uphold that commitment, that promise, is a slap in the face to the American people. Before I conclude, let me share with you one final story of how the shutdown is harming American families. Jennifer, from my district, is a mother of six with a special needs child. Her husband is active duty Coast Guard. She's been forced to tell her children they can't have seconds at dinner because she doesn't know if she'll have enough food to last the week. Her daughter has an ultrasound coming up and she's unsure if she can afford the specialist copay. She writes that she and her husband supported President Trump but that after this she does not see, and I quote, how we could support someone so out of touch and willing to damage so many people in order to save his own face. Jessica ended her message by saying that they're prepared to stand strong but she is also prepared to stand at the corner of an intersection with a cardboard sign if that's what she has to do to feed her children. This is not the America I was raised in. Let's end this shutdown today and get our country back on track. Madam Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time.